Have you ever traveled somewhere but also needed to get work done on the go but didn't bring a laptop? This setup can help solve your issue. Using a decently fast Android smartphone running a desktop Linux environment and a tablet like this old iPad 2, you can get a full desktop experience on the go. The entire setup, including the phone, iPad, and keyboard, all fits into a footprint smaller than an 11-inch netbook. You even get a full desktop environment, which is much better than even the best of phone multitasking, helping with mobile productivity. In this video, I'll show you how to breathe new life into an old iPad by turning it into a desktop workstation. Before I get started, there's a few prerequisites that you need before starting this project. First of all, you'll need a decently fast Android smartphone running Android Lollipop or above. Anything with a Snapdragon 600 series processor and up should suffice. You'll also need a good amount of free space and RAM on the phone. At least 2 gigs of free storage and 3 gigs of RAM should work, but of course, as always, more is recommended. In addition, both your tablet and your phone should have access to a fast, low latency network. It doesn't really need to connect to the internet, it just needs to be fast to communicate with the devices. Side note, don't have access to one while you're on the go? I'll explain later how this setup can still work even without an external network. And finally, I'd recommend having a bit of knowledge about Linux and how to work the terminal. I'll still try my best to explain this to a beginner, but if you do have any issues, please leave them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. I'll also leave a written version of this tutorial in the description in case you prefer it in that form. First of all, let's begin by setting up everything that's necessary on the phone itself. First of all, you'll need to download the Userland application from the Play Store. I'll leave a link in the description. This app does require a phone running at least Android 5.0 Lollipop. Once you open up the app, you'll need to start by choosing a Linux distro from the list. Here I'll choose Debian, since it's lightweight and perfect for our purposes. Be sure to choose SSH. This will make it much easier to run our setup commands. Choose a username, password, and VNC password. At this point, your VNC password doesn't really matter since we're not going to use the built-in VNC. Once it downloads and launches, you essentially have an ARM-based Debian machine. It's a pretty bare system, but we're completely ready to get the install started. I'll switch to another view so you can see the text a bit better. First, we'll want to run the following commands. We'll want to run sudo apt update and sudo apt install tigervnc standalone server, lxde core, and nano. This will install the necessary software needed to run a desktop environment. This download will take a, quite a lot of time and download quite a bit of data, so this will take some time to install. For me, this install took about 10 minutes, but depending on the speed of the phone and the internet connection, it could take longer. Once it's done, run this command to set up a password to access the desktop environment. Be sure to also set a view-only password, since in this version it helps with stability. Next, run nano VNC X startup to edit the startup configuration. Scroll down to this line here and remove it. Then add this exact line in its place. This will override the basic desktop environment with our new one. Press Ctrl X, then the Y key and enter to save and exit. Finally, we'll need to create some useful scripts to help with starting up and closing down our desktop environment. Run nano start.sh and type in this line here. You're free to change the resolution by editing the command as you wish. Again, press Ctrl X, then the Y key, and then enter to save and exit. Next, we'll create the script to stop the server when we're done working. Run nano n.sh and type in this line here. This will properly kill the server when we're done, so that way things are clean the next time we want to run it. Exit and save using Control X, Y, and Enter. Finally, we'll make these scripts executable. Run these two commands. And then we're essentially done on the phone side. To start up the desktop environment, simply run dot slash start dot sh, and to end it, run dot slash end dot sh. Then you're free to close the Linux terminal and stop the userland app. At the end of the previous step, you can essentially run the desktop environment on the phone itself, but that's no fun. I'll now guide you through setting up the interface to view the desktop from a tablet, in, in this case, an iPad 2. Luckily, this part of the setup is much easier than the last. First of all, launch the App Store or Play Store and install your VNC viewer of choice. For iOS, your only real choice is Real VNC Viewer, which is my preferred viewer. On Android, feel free to use whichever one you prefer. Real VNC Viewer also works here. Next, head over to your device's settings and make sure your phone and tablet are on the same network. Once you verify that, go to the phone and figure out what its local IP address is. This will allow you to connect to the phone from the tablet. Once you know that, head back to the VNC viewer on the tablet and create a new connection. 
For the address, be sure to put the IP address of your phone, followed by a colon, and then the number 5901. For example, if the IP address of your phone was 192.168.150, you type in 192.168.150.5901 into the address bar. Then feel free to name the device whatever you want that will help you remember it. You can now hop onto your phone and run the start.sh command to start the server, and then hit connect on the tablet. If everything went according to plan, you should now see a login screen and or a prompt saying that the connection is unencrypted. Enter your VNC password you set earlier and hit connect. If everything's set up correctly, you should see a desktop like this one. Congratulations! Things will look a bit different since I have installed skin here. Your desktop will look something like this. Also, you might notice the colors look slightly strange. To fix this, just open up the information panel and set the quality to high or medium. This will of course depend on how fast your network is. If you don't see a desktop at this point, you likely missed a step. Try first rewatching the video. I'll also put a list of instructions in the description in case you prefer to follow it that way. Anyway, now you're free to use the desktop environment in any way you want. A few key apps you might want to install now are LibreOffice and Firefox ESR. Just run up another terminal from the start button, System Tools Xterm, and run this command to install them both. sudo apt install LibreOffice and Firefox ESR. This will start another download and install, which should take some time. Once it's finished, you'll be able to launch them from the start button. Now you can work on the go using this setup. Once you're ready to shut down the setup, simply disconnect from the VNC server on the tablet, and then hop onto the phone and run the dot slash n dot sh command. Now you can exit the userland app, and you're completely shut down from the environment. Now that you have a fully working Linux desktop environment, you might be wondering how you can build upon this setup for even more functionality. The great news is that in terms of software, it's very easy to install using the built-in apt package manager. Just Google install, insert your software here, Debian, and you should see the commands to run to install that software. Just remember that this is an ARM-based system, so not all software will work on this. I would recommend sticking to the software I install in this tutorial. Anyway, in terms of hardware, you can even add a Bluetooth keyboard to the tablet for even better productivity. Here I added this keyboard that fits very nicely with the iPad. Also, you can even experiment with multi-user setups using this. This will require lots of Linux know-how, and is beyond the scope of this video. I encourage you to look into this yourself if this is something you'd be interested in. Alright, so I mentioned earlier that this setup will still work even if you don't have access to an external network, and that's completely true. The only requirement is that your phone needs to be able to start up a Wi-Fi hotspot. That's it! Simply start up the hotspot and connect the tablet to it. Then figure out the IP address of the phone by looking at the gateway or router IP address on the tablet. Then you can type that address, followed by the same colon 5901 into the VNC viewer, and it should hopefully work as it did before, but now relying on your LTE connection as an internet source. By the way, the default IP address prefix for Android hotspots are 192.168.43 something. So look for an address beginning with that, and be sure to use the gateway address. So there you have it. A completely independent, compact, portable workstation using just a phone, a tablet, and possibly a Bluetooth keyboard. You can take this anywhere where space is a constraint, and bringing a laptop isn't feasible. You can also take advantage of the full desktop environment and get good work done on the go. And finally, you'll be able to breathe new life into your aging tablet by giving it a new purpose. Hopefully you found this video helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you guys so very much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button just below this video. If you'd like to watch more from me, I picked out two videos on the left just for you. If you'd like to subscribe, there's my icon on the right. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. No one watches this far in the video, do they?